The warmest of welcomes to all of you for our conference on John Ruskin, 19th century visionary, 21st century inspiration. Uh, this is the fourth of the eight academic conferences that the Huntington is hosting this year, and I'm absolutely delighted to see so many people here uh, at such a busy time of year. So thank you all for coming. My name is Steve Hindle. I'm Director of Research here at the Huntington, where my responsibilities include the fellowship program, the lecture program, and the conference program. It's my pleasant duty to be your host over the next uh, couple of days. And my duties initially here this morning are to give you a few housekeeping announcements, to thank most sincerely my uh, extraordinary staff and colleagues across the institution for everything that they have done to make this possible, and then to introduce the conference convener, Jim Spates, who has done so much to put this uh, remarkable program uh, together. So, on the housekeeping front, uh, restrooms are on the uh, northern side of the Rothenberg Hall, so out of this door, right and left. Uh, please do not bring food or drink, especially coffee, into this auditorium. We are trying to keep it pristine. It's been open for four years, and there have been minimal spillages in here. I know that the idea of a conference session without caffeine is anathema to most people, but I also know that I'd be the first person to kick the coffee cup over, so don't be that person. Uh, if you've purchased lunch, lunch will be served in the Rose Hills Foundation Garden Court, which is the glass dome just outside uh, Rothenburg Hall. If you haven't purchased lunch, lunch is available both in the Chinese Garden and at the 1919 restaurant. We are, of course, in the middle of 200 acres of uh, botanical gardens, and I would encourage you, if you get the opportunity, to stretch your legs, particularly in the desert garden, uh, which after so much rain is looking particularly beautiful, and in the Chinese garden, which is tripling in size as the third phase of its construction is coming towards its uh, completion. If you do wander around the gardens, please make sure you have your conference badge on you. The security guards know that anybody with a conference badge can have access to the gardens for free, but if you don't have your conference badge, the security guards will apprehend you take you to the admissions desk and make you buy an annual membership and we really don't want that to happen because you are here as our guests. I'd also like to point you in the direction of the Huntington Bookstore which uh, especially for this occasion has stocked a number of uh, publications related to Ruskin so if you're looking for Christmas presents or holiday presents for anybody uh, Ruskin related uh, stuff <laughs> is in the bookstore. Uh, a brief word about the auditorium, which, as you can hear, is acoustically really rather remarkable. We are recording this event, both audio and uh, visuals, as you can tell. So we will use a handheld mic during Q&A. So please be patient if you've got a contribution to make from the floor, while either me or my staff make sure that you've got a microphone in your hands before you ask a question. The other interesting thing about this room is that counterintuitively you can't get to the stage from the front of the auditorium. You need to walk backwards and round and it's quite a long way. Please do not pole vault onto the stage. Uh, our litigation insurance is not sufficiently robust to cope with any injuries that you may sustain in the process. This has been an unusually complex program to host. I think it's real testament to the level of interest in Ruskin and indeed to the breadth of Ruskin's interests that there are several uh, additional components to this program that we wouldn't usually do as part of a conference. And that's made extraordinary demands on uh, my staff and my colleagues across the institution. So this is my opportunity to offer sincere and heartfelt thanks to all of them. First of all, to our registrar, Sharon Robinson, for handling the loan and installation of what I'm sure you all agree is a really rather formidable sculpture of John Ruskin, which is on display in the lobby of the Rothenberg Hall uh, at the moment. And of course to Gabriel Meyer for loaning uh, that extraordinary item from uh, his own personal collection. And that sculpture, um, the Borglum sculpture will be on exhibit throughout the conference, so uh, please feel free to spend some time with it. Thank you, Sharon, and thank you, Gabriel. 
Melinda McCurdy, please stand and take some gratitude. So Dr. Melinda McCurdy is our curator <laughs> of, of British art. This is an exceptionally busy time for Melinda. She's preparing a very significant exhibit at the Huntington next year on 100 great British drawings. And in the middle of preparing that, she took the time to put together a jewel of an exhibit on Ruskin and his frenemies, which is on display in the Huntington Art Gallery. And there'll be time over lunch today for you to spend some time with Melinda as she shows you that exhibit. And as we break for lunch, I'll explain what the logistics of that uh, will be. Our AV technician, Ben, are you there, Ben? Hey, Ben. Um, there is also a musical performance as part of this program, uh, and Ben has made arrangements to make sure that the sound and uh, preparations for that uh, are in place. Uh, ben is an incredibly safe pair of hands, so thank you, Ben, for all that you've done. To my assistant, Catherine Wary miller uh, for her remarkable work on the preparation of the really rather beautiful conference brochure. I'm sure you'll agree it is a thing of beauty. Uh, and to her and Natalie Serrano for working on other logistics and reimbursements. But most of all, to the hero of the hour. As I say, there are a lot of um, moving parts to a program this complex, and at the center of all of them has been my friend and colleague Juan Gomez, who has gone the extra mile. in coordinating all of this. You'll see a lot of one over the next couple of days. He's the ice man when it comes to slide uh, shows and presentations, but really one great job, thank you. Now my pleasure to introduce the conference convener, Jim Spates. Uh, we first started talking about this program nearly four years ago as we anticipated the Ruskin Bicentennial, and we thought it was critically important that there should be a Californian component uh, to those uh, celebrations and commemorations. And we're really delighted, not only that we've got the program together, but it has attracted so much interest. As I'm sure you all know, Jim is Professor of Sociology Emeritus at Hobart and William Smith Colleges in New York, where he taught from 1971 until 2014. He holds his BA from Colby College and his PhD from Boston University, and published extensively uh, on the sociology of cities, the sociology of values and of human nature, on the quality of city and social life, and on 1960s counterculture. Over the last 20 years, however, he's become increasingly is interested in Ruskin, and especially in his biography and the sociological implications of his writings. He's the author of The Imperfect Round, Helen Gill Villiers' Life of Ruskin, which appeared in 2005, and of Why Ruskin, published online as a series of posts. I'm sure you've read many of them since 2013. And, of course, of a large number of articles published in The Companion, the annual publication of the Guild of St. George, and the newsletter of the Friends of Brantwood. Please welcome Jim Spates. Thank you. 